Hello and welcome back to my Rise and Fall series where we talk about the story behind different makeup brands and today we will be discussing the rather short-lived KKW Beauty. I will leave the full playlist link down below. I've also covered Kylie Cosmetics. Most recently I did MAC. We've, we've talked about a lot of brands in this series so I will leave it linked if you want to watch any others but let's talk about the story of KKW. You guys, I was actually having like such a great hair day today, but you would never know because I had to throw it up. I started to film this and it is like almost 100 degrees today, which I think in Celsius is like 33 maybe. And I was like, I can't, I cannot have my hair on my neck. So just envision like I was having a great hair day. Okay. So you probably already know that KKW Beauty is, or was, shall we say was, because it's not really a brand anymore, but we'll get there because it kind of is. We'll get there. But this was Kim Kardashian's beauty brand. But the same way we did in the Kylie Cosmetics video, once again, we have to talk about ColourPop because they are related, sort of. So I'm gonna have chapters. I always put chapters on my video. If you know the ColourPop slash Seed Beauty slash Kylie story, feel free to skip ahead. But you know, let's run through it briefly. So KKW Beauty was started under the brand incubator Seed. Seed Beauty also started ColourPop. They started Tati Beauty. They started Kylie Cosmetics. But Seed Beauty actually somewhat was started all the way back in the 50s by a man named Walter Spatz. And back then it was a manufacturer only and they were manufacturing products for a ton of beauty brands, huge, huge beauty brands all over the world. They were making everything there. And in 1989, a family called the Nelson family purchased Spatz Labs and then they went on continuing to manufacture makeup products for different brands. And in the year 2014, the siblings in the family, Laura and John, decided to create a brand incubator named Seed Beauty. Now, brand incubators, they're big these days, but at the time, in terms of in like the beauty space, you know, they weren't as prevalent as they are currently. So this was a huge deal when they started Seed Beauty in 2014. And the first brand under Seed Beauty was ColourPop. The second one was Kylie Cosmetics. And then eventually down the road, they also created KKW Beauty. And so in the beginning, this was a bit controversial because people wanted, were kind of questioning, you know, how much crossover is there in formulations between ColourPop and Kylie and KKW, especially knowing they're all made in the same factory. Now, to be honest, that happens a lot in the cosmetic industry that a lot, most things are made in the same factories. But I remember in the beginning, that was a bit controversial, especially because in terms of Kylie Cosmetics, it was kind of denied in the beginning that they had that connection with ColourPop. But if you want to hear more on Kylie, I'll have that video linked. But KKW Beauty was founded in 2017 and their first launch was the ever controversial contour stick. So I wanna paint the picture of 2017 makeup trends. You know, this was already the era of a very glam makeup look. This was when like highlighting was all the rage. You wanted to see a blinding highlight a mile away. Like if it did not, if you didn't need to like shield your eyes from it, it wasn't bold enough. Like this was the kind of makeup we were just eating up in 2017. Contouring was so prevalent at the time. And a lot of these contour trends were very inspired by Kim Kardashian herself. So it made sense that the first launch we would see from KKW would be the contour stick. And it was a dual ended product. The shape of it, you know, was a little questionable. It looked like a little something. They also had the brush and the sponge. And this launch was so controversial because no one seemed to like it. I had not tried this product. I cannot speak to the formulation of this, but I have only heard bad things. People said it didn't blend. I would say probably the number one complaint we were hearing was that there was no product in there. Like the amount of product you were getting for the cost of the item felt rather overpriced. People said it was hard to blend. They said the brush didn't work well. They said the sponge didn't work well. Like it wasn't a particularly well-received product, but you were seeing it everywhere. And that was in part because Kim's team did a really great job generating buzz for this. So at the time, if you were watching beauty content on the internet, I'm sure you were bombarded with this. Like I, I can remember this so distinctly because Kim was coming onto like every big beauty YouTuber channel. She did a video with Jaclyn Hill. She did a video with Nikki Tutorials. Like you were seeing Kim everywhere and these creators would like do their makeup with Kim or Nikki did 
Kim's makeup. She did the power of makeup, which is the side by side of like a full face versus nothing. And in all these videos, she was using the product. She was promoting it. But from the start, the opinion seemed to be that the brand felt like a bit of a cash grab, you know? And I suppose when we look over the history of the Kardashian slash Jenner family in general, they launch a lot of brands. They have so many different companies in that family. Good American. Most recently, I, I think most recently, Lemmy, the like supplement brand from Courtney, 818, Kylie Cosmetics, Kylie Swim, Skims. Like honestly, I'm just skimming the surface here. I could go on for like 10 minutes just naming all of the brands that that family has at one time owned or currently still does. And based on that, I, I remember hearing a lot of conversation from people feeling like the brand seemed maybe like a bit of a money grab, especially because that first product didn't seem that impressive, especially knowing that she has so many resources available to her to make something incredible. I will say though, the following launches that we started to see from KKW Beauty seem to have more positive reviews. I would say in general, like the main critique I saw from the brand over the years was just that things looked repetitive, but I'm not gonna blame the brand for that because I would say that's most makeup launches these days. I do remember specifically though, like every single palette kind of looked the same, but also they felt on brand to Kim and the style of makeup that she was wearing. So it didn't seem off, you know? Now flash forward to 2020, her sister's brand, Kylie Cosmetics, uh, sold a 51% controlling stake to Cody, which is another big parent company. Cody is huge. They own Rimmel, Philosophy, Marc Jacobs Fragrance, CoverGirl, tons of others. Uh, we're just, again, we're skimming the surface here. Cody's huge. Uh, KKW also sold a 20% stake to Cody for $200 million. But this is where they kind of start to run into some trouble. And this wasn't super public information and the way both brands, Kylie and Kim, kind of presented this was genius. I will give them that. They have a great PR team. But what happens next is that Seed Beauty wants to sue because they don't want their formulations going to Cody. Because remember, Seed manufactures for a lot of their brands under their umbrella and they didn't want Cody to have those formulations. So we saw some weird things going on with both sisters brands, both Kylie and KKW. They kind of closed down and the reasons we were hearing seemed, you know, maybe believable. With Kylie, they're like, we want to rebrand. We want to go fully vegan. We want to do this and do that. And then as you saw in the Kylie video, once they relaunched, it was kind of the same thing. But with Kim, I feel like this so conveniently worked out for that brand. I mean, not conveniently. Well, let me explain. February 2021, uh, she filed for divorce from her husband, Kanye West. And uh, in July was when they announced that KKW Beauty would be closing down. And uh, it fully closed down on August 1st. They said on August 1st at midnight, we will be shutting down kkwbeauty.com so that we can come back to you under a completely new brand with new formulas that are even more modern, innovative, and packaged in an elevated and sustainable, <laughs> sustainable new look. So at the time, the conversation I was hearing from everyone was that, oh, well, she wants to drop the W because she's getting divorced they're gonna rename it because she doesn't want it to be KKW anymore. Now, likely that could have played a factor, I really don't know, but what was actually happening was that, yeah, they couldn't sell these formulas anymore because they were being sued. This was settled out of court, but my assumption is that that's why we saw the change from both of the brands. That's why they both had to shut down for a little while there and then they came back, they're like, oh, we're rebranding, we wanna change things up. Maybe they did but it was probably more influenced by the lawsuit. So flash forward to her new brand, Skin, S-K-K -K for Kim Kardashian N. And this once again was controversial and that is because Lori Harvey also had a brand called Skin, but spelt S-K-N. So I was really curious about this and I looked up the trademarks for both brands because I wanted to know the timeline. So. Lori Harvey filed trademark for SKN by LH January 1st, 2021. Uh, Kim Kardashian's team filed for trademark for SKKN by Kim on March 30th, 2021. 
Now, both, um, both women have like a few trademarks. They trademarked like just skin and then skin by Kim and then SKN by LH, just SKN, you know, they have a few different trademarks and some of them happened at different dates, but these were the earliest trademarks I could find from both, which anytime I do a video related to, um, Kim and any of her brands, I always really need to point this out because it makes me laugh every single time. The name, where did I put this in my notes? <laughs> you know, I'm serious when I have the iPad out. The name of Kim's company is Kim's a princess Inc. And that cracks me up because I mean, she made that name like well over a decade ago, but it's just, it's so funny. I laugh that that's still what all of her companies are under, Kim's A Princess Inc. But Skin is her most recent beauty brand and they sell uh, what I will describe as obnoxiously priced skincare products, but they're very different in terms of packaging and aesthetic from what we saw from KKW. So KKW Beauty was very like nude, millennial pink, whereas Skin by Kim is a lot more neutral, very gray, very geometric in the packaging. It's reminiscent of if you've seen Kim's home, it is like very, very minimal. Now, to be honest, I've heard such little about this brand. I don't know that many people use it. It doesn't seem to be as well received as KKW Beauty, but it was recently announced that they will be launching makeup under this brand as well. And this was announced in a tweet from Kim. Someone asked, can we talk skin makeup? We need an ASAP. And she replied, this year, it's coming all of your faves. She also said anything that's applied to the skin or helps accentuate your skin will be under the skin brand. I wanted to be one site where you guys can get it all and not go to three places for your beauty products. She said she has fragrances coming also, which we also saw originally under the same KKW. We had KKW fragrance at the same time. And I tried to be nosy as I always do. I was looking into trademarks just to see if I could find anything in particular that we might be seeing from skin later this year. I did not find anything. I actually wasn't able to find any new trademarks really except for all of her children's names. That's what I've seen most recently trademarked by her company. And I don't know that that will be related to any of the cosmetics that could be like future ventures with her children. I think she just wanted to have them trademarked just in case. But you know, now that I say that, it could be for something in terms of products because that is something we have seen with all the siblings, but especially with Kylie. She has collaborated with all of her siblings, all of her friends. So it is possible that Kim will do some collections or launches related to her children. We will just have to wait and see. Now that story of KKW Beauty, it was pretty short lived. There wasn't a ton to go into there, but I have so many thoughts that I wanna share. Because from the beginning, I found it a bit weird to be honest that they launched KKW Beauty because my perception is that there are similar fans for all of the siblings. You know, the Kardashians are very polarizing humans. People either love them or they hate them. But in general, the people that love the Kardashians typically love all of them. You know, it's rare that you're like, I just like this sister. I don't like any of the others. Like if you like them, you like them all. I'm saying Kardashians, but I'm referring to the Jenner sisters as well. And so when KKW launched and so much of it felt almost parallel to Kylie Cosmetics. I mean, you know, it's also started under Seed Beauty. They're being made in the same factories. The products are similar. The price point is similar. I was a bit perplexed because I'm asking myself, okay, are these products for separate audiences? It doesn't seem like they would be. I feel like they're kind of like taking from each other, you know? And I can only imagine, I could be completely wrong here, but I almost feel like, like these two brands are almost direct competitors to each other. You know, Kim is taking business from Kylie. Kylie is taking business from Kim. They're launching similar products. And so as I started thinking about that, it made complete sense to me that Skin, the new brand is ultra luxe, you know, it looks very different than what we've seen from Kylie Cosmetics, but the price points look very different. Like these products are like $100 for like a hyaluronic acid serum. That is not the same audience that was buying KKW. And I will say, I, I wouldn't anticipate, maybe I'm wrong, I could be completely wrong, because you know, they've done the market research here, not me, what do I know, but 
I would not have expected that the average Kim Kardashian fan would be buying something so luxe and expensive like that. Especially knowing in general, a lot of their fan base is a bit younger. I wouldn't anticipate them to have that level of disposable income to be buying $100 hyaluronic acid serums, but I could be wrong. You know, her team has done the research, not me. But that has me assuming that when we see makeup come from skin, it will likely sit at that higher luxury price point. And I'm really curious to see how successful this brand will or will not be. I'm also curious about retail partners because previously KKW Beauty was in Ulta, just like Kylie Cosmetics, but Ulta doesn't necessarily have that many ultra luxurious brands. They definitely are getting more in terms of like higher price point brands. They now have like Chanel, Dior, uh, Natasha Denona. Uh, also rumored Pat McGrath is coming to Ulta. That's interesting to me. Who knows if that's true though, because they said a while ago that Charlotte Tilbury was coming to Ulta. That never happened. Like way to get my hopes up. But from what I'm envisioning from skin, I picture this partnership working a bit better at Sephora actually, especially knowing that Sephora has really embraced celebrity brands. Like we have Give Beauty, Gwen Stefani's brand that just recent, well, recently launched at Sephora. We've got Lady Gaga's brand after they rebranded. House Labs is now at Sephora. Makeup by Mario was at Sephora, you know, not necessarily a celebrity bit, but kind of in his own right. And I'll be interested to see how similar the launches look to her previous brand. But one thing I feel very confident about is that the products are gonna be very, very neutral. Lots of browns, lots of beige. She has even confirmed this herself. She said all the neutral amazingness you could ever want. And I think that's one thing she's done a really great job of is really keeping her launches and a lot of her products true to her own personal brand. And I think a lot of people associate Kim with a very neutral, very brown makeup, not a lot of color. And so that's what I would anticipate from skin by Kim. You know, we'll wait and find out later this year, but let me know down below. Do you miss KKW Beauty? Are you looking forward to seeing makeup under skin? Let me know all your thoughts down below. I will have the full playlist if you wanna binge watch any other rise and fall videos, but thank you so much for watching and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.